everyone, and welcome to our uh, Local History Research 101 series. Um, my name is Matt. I'm the head librarian, as well as the local history librarian uh, here at the Moffitt Library of Washingtonville, uh, located in Orange County, New York. Um, and this series is meant to kind of give you a brief overview of our collections, uh, both in-house and online, and uh, how they might be able to help you in your personal research, whether you're learning about your own family's history and its connections to our area, or if you're researching a specific uh, historic event and maybe uh, some and how that event impacted uh, the people who lived here, um, or if you're just generally interested in learning about, um, you know, old houses, people that you might have heard about, um, or even, you know, the origins of certain street signs around the area, uh, we have something here for you. And uh, that's kind of what this presentation is about today. So to give you a brief overview of our collections, um, our archival collections consist of about 120 cubic feet of records. Uh, to put that in perspective for you, um, that's about one to 200 uh, copy paper boxes that you might see at your local office supply store. Um, that's the amount of historical records that we have in our collections that we're constantly going through daily uh, to try to make them findable and easy for you to, to research and locate your, your information um, that you're interested in learning about. We also have about 1,904 print materials. Uh, this consists of uh, published works um, you know, histories of the town of Washingtonville, uh, I'm sorry, town of Blooming Grove, village of Washingtonville, as well as specific organizations such as the First Presbyterian Church, uh, the Congregational Church of Blooming Grove, um, this, other, other organizational records um, and materials, as well as cemetery records, too, that have been published. Um, we have those here, too. We also have, um, you know, other, you know, print materials related to UFO sightings. Yep, that's true, we have those here too. Um, you know, so, you know, history isn't just about, um, you know, things that have happened that you've read about in school. It's also things that have happened in the area or have been documented in our area as well, whether or not you choose to believe them or not uh, is, a, is another matter, but the fact that they've been written and documented, we have those here for you too. We also have about uh, 2,800 digitized photographs, maps, and manuscripts. Um, so these materials, are things that people have actually written. So you we're thinking about, um, you know, legal documents from the 18th century. Uh, we're talking about um, letters from the American Civil War. We're talking about maps that um, outlined uh, the uh, creation of Mountain Lodge Park um, and some of the uh, houses that were established there too, uh, when it was a vacation residence. Uh, we have those here as well. We also have artifacts. Um, historical things are not in our collections are not really are, are not just relegated to paper. Uh, we have textiles. We have World War One uniforms. We have uh, women's clothing from the late uh, 19th, early 20th century. Um, we also have furniture. We have um, other materials such as cookware, things that people would have used in their daily lives, things that were connected to people here. We have those here for you as well. Um, and again, it's not just print paper, it's not just photographs, static images that tell a story, it's the actual objects that people used in their daily lives. And uh, that's really an important thing that kind of brings history to life in a very, you know, a tactile way, uh, so to speak. Um, these collections can be found in our local history room. Uh, again, if, if you were uh, a resident here in uh, the town of Blooming Grove or the village of Washingtonville, um, you know, in the, from basically the 1950s on uh, this uh, to about, I'm sorry, to about 2011, you would have remembered this room as the reference room. Um, during the, uh, the 2016, uh, 2017 restoration and renovation project uh, that was done to the library, uh, this room was turned into our local history room and a uh, quiet reading area. So um, the local history room here is unique in that we have materials that are, yes, behind locked cabinets, but we also have items that you can physically check out too. And we're gonna be talking about those in a little bit as well. 
Um, the uh, stained glass windows are original to the library. Uh, the stained glass window on the left hand side is from Tiffany & Co. The one on the right hand side is from Belcher. And uh, both of them are uh, dedicated in the memory of um, members of the Moffitt family who played a very important role here in our community, um, as well as uh, the fact that the uh, library itself sits on property uh, that was uh, previously owned by the Moffitts. Um, that, in addition to the fact that, um, you know, David H. Moffitt Jr., the, the gentleman who actually the library is named after, um, you know, played a very important role in our community. But they aren't the only stories to tell, as I'm, I'm going to be explained to you in a little bit as well. But just for the fact uh, of the layout of the room, I figured I'd point those out. Um, we also have uh, display cabinets, you'll see those in the, in the picture on the right hand side, uh, where we have um, a rotating exhibit, ga uh, exhibit uh, we have rotating exhibits of, you know, local nature. Um, so uh, at, at present we have uh, exhibits related to local farming families, but before we had exhibits related to, um, you know, World War I in our community, we had exhibits uh, focused on local authors. So Usually we try to change that out um, as we can. Um, so we want to be able to highlight some of the things from our vault that we can't really show, um, you know, all the time. And uh, that's what those are for. We also have uh, tables and chairs there for you to use if you're doing research or you want to uh, take notes, um, use, our, use our items uh, in, in your research and, and, and all that, uh, take photographs of them. Uh, we have those here for you as well. Um, there are procedures that are involved in that, but you know they're, we like to think that they're fairly it's uh, you know fairly straight straightforward for most users to uh, kind of adapt to. Um, I mentioned before that we have uh, books that can be checked out from our local history collection. Um, if you are a, a member of the Ramapo Catskill Library System. That's the library system that our uh, our organization is affiliated with. You can check out one of our one or several of our local history books um, with a valid library card. Um, again, these books relate to any topic of uh, interest that pertain to our area as well as the Hudson Valley region. So um, we have books on ghosts sightings and UFO sightings in the Hudson Valley, but we also have uh, books that you could check out related to, um, you know, Bannermans Island, Washingtonville and Blooming Grove, um, you know, or, you know, a specific event such as the last encampment of Washington, George Washington's army, which happened not here, but in uh, New Windsor. So we have um, books on different areas. Uh, that we border on um, in this collection that you could check out. We also have genealogies um, related to either specific families or, um, you know, or, 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 you know, ethnic groups. Uh, we have a wonderful multi-volume set of, uh, of, uh, of African-American genealogies um, specifically related to families who lived here and were established here. Of Afri and they were of African descent. Um, really worthwhile checking those out. It's probably one of my favorite uh, resources that we have in this collection that you could actually check out with your card. Um, we also have, as I mentioned before, exhibits from our archives. These are things that we don't normally get to share with people because they're either fragile or um, they are uh, kind of awkward, as you can see from some of, the, uh, some of the items on the right-hand side of the uh, screen. Um, and uh, again, currently, at the time that we took these photos, we're doing an exhibit on uh, local farming families. So the uh, scrapbook on the left-hand side is actually um, a scrapbook that was kept by Dwight Akers. And uh, Akers was a local historian. He also uh, owned a, um, a, a local farm in the area known as Round Hill. And uh, it's actually not connected to um, another uh, establishment here called Round Hill House, which is uh, now a catering venue. But it was also a farm at the time. But uh, Acres was documented um, the history of harness racing in our area. Um, he wrote several books on the subject, um, both fiction and nonfiction. 
Um, so uh, we have his uh, collection of papers and manuscripts from his, uh, his career as a professor of history at uh, Orange County Community College in the 1950s and 60s, as well as his, uh, his manuscripts on um, Orange County history uh, as well. Um, on the right-hand side, there is a weather vane uh, that belonged to the Sears Howell family farm. Uh, which was located heading uh, from our village heading west towards Chester. Um, and uh, they were known for breeding Ayrshire uh, cattle, which were you know, known for producing large amounts of dairy. And indeed, uh, this specific farm won several breeders' cups, uh, which we also own, um, or we, I'm sorry, we, we, that were also donated to our library uh, for view as well. And again, connected to this one family, but we have many other families in our area, um, such as the Goldsmiths um, that were, um, and, and Hallux actually, that were huge uh, livestock dealers, breeders, um, and dairy farmers as well. So we really wanted to highlight, uh, you know, some of those unique things in our collection too. Um, now, you know, there's the shiny things, and then there's also kind of like the daily um, daily reports and the things that you might take take for granted, but they do tell a story all their own. Um, this is our government docs uh, collection. Uh, basically, what these are are documents and reports related to um, local environmental projects or environmental impact statements uh, that are submitted by um, companies or individuals that uh, are are or corporations that are working on projects in our area that may impact um, certain uh, aspects of our daily life, whether it's waterways or um, transportation, things like that. Um, we have those reports here as well. Um, for example, we do have a collection, an archive of uh, records and reports related to the mayor landfill, uh, which was, uh, you know, which is a, a, a huge part of our, our, our area's history. Um, we also have, um, you know, economic reports that were submitted to New York State. Um, so if you want to learn a little bit about kind of the economic history and kind of, you know, what tax figures over time, um, you know, how they change, uh, those would be in these collections as well. We also have on the right-hand side of this, um, you know, this bookshelf here are um, our cross-search directories, which are really great. Um, you know, they basically list uh, names of people and, and local businesses that lived in our area at a specific time. Um, so if you're doing genealogy, if you're trying to research the history of a specific company, where they were, what their, you know, where, where their address was, we have those records here for you too. And that's on the right-hand side. We also have in this collection, uh, you know, here and there maps, because when you're, let's say you're building a, uh, a transfer station or uh, you're putting in maybe a, uh, a well or um, what have you, um, and you're a, a major corporation and you have to submit, um, you know, statements that for public review, um, those maps might have to be drafted to show kind of where everything is going to be. So um, maps related to specific projects are also in this collection too. And if you're looking for something, you know, that says specific, um, you know, please let us know. We're more than happy to direct you to resources that we have in our collection. Um, as well as, um, you know, our local government agencies, such as the Town of Blooming Grove, a clerk's office, the Orange County Government Facility, um, Village of Washingtonville uh, government offices as well. And we'll be happy to direct you in those, those directions as well. So now showing you some of the things that we have. Now, how do we get to them and how do you actually access them and research them? Well, uh, the best thing to do is to call ahead or email us. Uh, Moffat at rcls.org is our general uh, email. Um, it's checked fairly regularly and regularly, and those emails will go to uh, you know me um, or the appropriate staff member, depending on what your question is. Um, highly recommend including you know as much information as you can about the topic that you want to research. Um, you know, if it's a specific family or a surname or a business, um, you know, tell us about it because there might be things that we may not know about about this either uh, that we want to add to our um, our body of knowledge about it too. Um, so again, 
whatever you can provide us in terms of information in your research query would be a huge uh, help to us and would be we could actually probably process your, your, your requests a little bit faster um, and more efficiently. Um, if you want to do if you want to take photographs of our collection or you want to photocopy something um, may or may not be allowed depending on um, you know how fragile the item is in some cases we've actually gone ahead and uh, scanned um, some of the more fragile rare items uh, for you so we might be able to print you out a high resolution image of a specific thing depending on what you're looking for um, but in most cases, if not all cases, I always say, please ask first. It doesn't hurt. Um, and we actually would prefer that. Um, if you want to take notes or you're doing research, bring a laptop, a tablet, number two pencil, and a notepad. Perfectly acceptable um, if you think you might need to take notes. Um, we don't recommend using pens, markers, crayons, anything that can make a permanent uh, indentation or um, you know, mark um, for obvious reasons. We don't want the original documents or books to be uh, damaged in any way. So, uh, number two pencil, not that, you know, recommend writing in the books, obviously, but it's a little bit easier for us to kind of take care of and, um, you know, allows us, allows for the long term care of our, of these rare pieces of history. Um, if you, uh, if, and, and, and I also recommend, um, giving yourself enough time to enjoy our library and, our, and, and our collections. Um, I really, you know, it's, it's a real shame sometimes because we have people who visit from out of state and they're just visiting for maybe for maybe 45 minutes or an hour and uh, they end up finding things that they really want to take home with them or they want, they want more information on. Um, try to uh, set some time aside to actually not just come here take a few photographs and leave. Um, we want you to stay here and feel comfortable here, um, you know, with our materials in our collection. Um, again, we, we also want to make sure that we have somebody on hand that can uh, assist you um, uh, access some of these materials. Um, we usually only allow you to take out maybe one thing at a time um, for obvious reasons. And also, as you come across things in your research, you might have a few more questions uh, for us that we might be able to assist you with. So we want to make sure that there's somebody there to help you, whether it's me or uh, another staff member who's trained in, in working with our local history collections. Um, so tying into kind of giving yourself enough time and being prepared, probably the most accessible thing for many of you who are, at, who are watching this from home is browsing our collections online. And we have a few ways of doing that. Uh, we have a local history resource guide and blog. Um, so these are both available through our web library website, moffitlibrary.org. Um, and again, you get there various ways, but I'm just going to give you the direct URL uh, for this purpose. Um, our local history resource guide uh, provides you with uh, information related to um, you know, local organizations that could help you with your research that are highlighted in our collections, um, books from our collections that you can browse online if they are available in the public domain, um, or um, place a hold on them if they can be allowed to be checked out and you have a library card with our library system. Um, it also provides you with some uh, contact information for local historians as well. Um, so again, it's not just our collection that's highlighted on here, um, but also other avenues of research that could help you uh, with your with your project or with with your query. Uh, we also have a local history blog, and uh, the blog is really great because it's a great because it's a way that um, we like to showcase some of the things from our collection that we either haven't exhibited yet or uh, they're frequently requested items or they are uh, things that really kind of tell a story um, to our not just our local history but also our state and national and sometimes international history because remember um, as we all know um, you know it's we don't just live in a vacuum we don't live in a bubble here um, we are all connected in some way uh, to what's going on and um, in, in, the, in, the, in the wider world around us. And that's kind of what the blog is here to tell you about. It's basically to kind of talk about 
interesting things from our collection as well as kind of what we're working on, um, whether it's, it's, an, it's an online exhibit, whether it's transcribing some letters from the Civil War um, or the First World War, women's clubs that met at the library in the 1920s or, or, or before that uh, in the pre-suffragette days. Um, we, have, we have articles on that here um, as well. And it kind of gives you a, a deeper understanding of some of these items um, in our local history. Um, this article itself is pretty cool. It's about a, um, a sit down uh, that was held um, in Harlem in the 1930s. And um, it's actually in a way tied to um, uh, tied to the civil kind of, kind of the civil rights movement as it was during that time period. And this is a flyer that is in our collection. Um, and it's and again, it's connected to mainly um, a Harlem um, uh, black historically black theater troupe um, or organization that was uh, established during the um, d during you know in, in in the in the wake of the the Great Depression and um, the uh, and, and basically this item belonged to somebody who either maybe attended this sit down or it was donated to them and they they donated it to the library but um, it's a really interesting piece of our history and again you could access the blog on um, moffatlibrary.org and uh, there's a there should be there's a section um, on our menu for local history and it will redirect you to our local history blog and resource guide and you can learn more about these things on there so now that i showed you some of the things from our blog and the resource guide and um, you know some of the things from our collection i want to show you a few things from um, that uh, you know are physically you know physical items from our, our collections that you might enjoy and you know we being a public library these are all print materials these are all books um, but I wanted to show you kind of the diversity of our collections here um, so uh, one such item that we have is a friend of the court it's a it's a novel that was written by Jesse Emerson Moffat and published in 1904 uh, Jesse Emerson Moffat was the daughter of, of, um, of the owner of the Brotherhood Wine Company um, at the time. Brotherhood was established in Washingtonville in 1839 um, by uh, John Jakes, um, and he um, established the winery basically as kind of like a side business. And eventually, by the late 20th, uh, what, I'm sorry, late 19th century, um, it became um, this uh, large corporation. But uh, Jessie Emerson Moffat uh, had a very interesting history herself. Um, she was a noted author. She traveled the world. We actually have her scrapbook that talks about all of her, the book talks that she gave. Um, she wrote this book as, uh, in addition to uh, a play and another uh, kind of romance novel uh, in the 1940s, 1950s. And what I find interesting about this book specifically is that, you know, we think about paperback romances, we think about, you know, Harlequin, um, the, uh, you know, kind of the, the period romances that, that are published today. And this is a period romance that was published in 1904, which is, is, is pretty cool. And um, Jessie Emerson Moffat herself was very much involved in our library's history. Um, she was one of the founders of the Athenia Club, which was kind of an all women's social group that met in our area. And um, it was basically kind of uh, a group where women who uh, either uh, worked at home, you know, they were homemakers or um, didn't really have an outlet to learn post high school, um, would meet on, you know, a fairly regular basis, usually once a month, and they would attend lectures that were given by local community figures or activists. We actually had um, a suffragette, uh, a, a Josephine Francis Yauger, uh, come here to the library. Um, in, in, in the early 1900s, and she gave a pre and she gave a talk about a year or so before um, women earned the right to vote in New York State. Um, so, uh, but Jesse Emerson Moffat was involved in that group. Uh, she also uh, was a socialite. She was involved in other organizations in our community as well. So again, the the book doesn't just tell the story of you know literature at this time in the, in the early 1900s. It also tells the story of this one particular person. And, um, and you know, she, she certainly has a very interesting story to tell herself. 
Um, now, yeah, I showed you a romance novel. I'm going to show you a cookbook now. Uh, this is the K Kitchen Loves Cookbook from 1976. It was published by the Sarah Wells Garden Club. Now, the Sarah Wells Garden Club was established um, around that time period as well, and they ran well until about the, about the middle to the late 1980s. And uh, they were a group of individuals who were interested in uh, garden in home gardening, but also they put on flower shows here at the library. Um, they raised money for uh, charity, and uh, you know, and, and did a lot of you know community uh, engagement through uh, gardening and, and landscape design and things of that nature. But uh, one of the things that they did to kind of raise money and kind of uh, kind of establish themselves and kind of raise awareness of the organization was they published a cookbook. And um, as you can see. Uh, this cookbook uh, is, is a little dated. It's not something that we would normally put on our shelves and uh, uh, here, but we do have it here. If you want to do try, if you want to try some of the recipes, uh, they are there for you. And I actually, I did write a blog post about this um, a few uh, uh, about a year or two ago, um, and uh, some of the recipes in, in there are quite interesting. Uh, for example, the pecan avocado molded salad. Uh, this is a, a, a kind of a, a very dated recipe um, from the days when Jello was used to kind of as Jello was used as a binding agent for anything. So if you remember growing up um, in the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 1980s even, um, and having Jello salad, um, you know, basically a, a giant gelatin mold with vegetables or fruits or meat, what have you, kind of um, you know, interlaced in it. Um, that uh, there's a whole chapter dedicated to these sorts of salads there. Um, and again, I'm only showing you this particular page just to show you it's, it's a really interesting piece of our, uh, of our local and national history. These are things, these are dishes that probably a lot of people ate um, in their households at this time, whether it was in Washingtonville, New York, or you know, Los Angeles, California. Um, very similar things were eaten at this time um, and recipes prepared like this. It also shows you, um, you know, who, whose recipes these were. Um, so if you were doing genealogy and let's say you had a relative that was a member of this club, you could read their recipe for rice salad or for um, you know, pork chops. And, uh, and you might have not had that um, in your family archive. Um, so it's a really interesting piece of, uh, of social history as well as uh, genealogical information. Uh, now, Finally, we get to um, a, corner, a Corner of God's Country by the Bowman Beach Corporation. This was published in 1930. And um, we, again, kind of tying it into kind of the way things are now, you think of, you know, buying a home, you think of, uh, you know, joining an HOA. Usually you're given a lot of literature about, you know, how great the community is or, you know, different home designs, or even if you are, um, you know, looking to vacation, you might get, you know, a, a mailer or an email about, you know, some rental properties and how great they are. This is an early example of that. And uh, so Tomahawk Lake uh, was uh, established uh, in the 1920s, 1930s as a uh, semi-permanent vacation community. So again, you think about people traveling up from New York City, uh, they want a vacation here over the summer. Some of them decide to stay here year round eventually or retire here. Uh, that's kind of the beginning of that. And uh, so the great thing about this book is that it actually shows you things as they were before the community of Tomahawk Lake was established. And um, if you own a home in the area and it's of a certain age or time period, you may see pictures of it in here, uh, whether it's an aerial view or an actual uh, you know, front on house shot. It also kind of, it also shows you, um, you know, some of the things that people did back then, you know, such as tennis or fishing, um, you know, a lot of the activities that kind of played into people's vacation routines. Um, this was a kind of a way to sell that to, uh, you know, a mass audience at that time. So with that, um, I leave it to you. If you have any questions, please feel free to email us, moffat at rcls.org. Um, the extension for the reference desk is uh, 326, so you're always welcome to leave a voicemail. Um, be sure to get back to you um, as, as soon as we can. Um, but with that, 
we welcome you to our, our archives, we welcome you to our local history collection, and we hope to learn just as much about our local history from you as you will from us. Um, and again, thank you very much. My name is Matt, and have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you.